then you only deem. Inshallah, uh, today we'll continue uh, the last part of Abu Huraira's uh, life story. And uh, then tomorrow we'll talk more about um, some of the glimpses of his life. We'll wrap it up, inshallah. So um, we stopped at uh, where he was generous and how the Khalifa has given him a ton load of gold and he spent it all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Immediately he did not hesitate to, uh, to keep any of it and uh, almost next day it was all gone. Abu Raya was also known to be very devoted to his Lord. Uh, he would fast every other day and pray Nafil at every chance that he had. He uh, also had uh, at one point uh, a disagreement with his maid. Uh, she uh, insulted him, so he, he set her free. He said, you know, he didn't punish her. He did not, um, you know, discipline his maid. He set her free. Um, he was also known to be a very dutiful son. Whenever, as we know, he made dua for his mother to embrace Islam. And one day he went to the Prophet Sallallahu and after, you know, many times of trying to uh, advise his mother and guide her to the straight path, teach her about Islam, and she was very resistant. He went to the Prophet Sallallahu and he was crying from uh, how much love he had for his mother and, and his disappointment that she wouldn't embrace Islam. And he asked the Prophet Sallallahu to make dua for his mother and um, <clears throat> they both made dua that she would embrace Islam. And by the time he went back home, he found his mother, you know, already a Muslim, and she gave her shahada uh, in front of Abu Huraira. So when, uh, as she grew up, he used to take care of her. And uh, to the point, one example is whenever he would go out, he would stand by her door and say, Assalamu alaikum, my dear mother. And she would respond, alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. And then he would make dua for her and uh, say, may Allah reward you for how much you've uh, taken care of me when I was young. And she would respond saying, may Allah reward you for how much you're taking care of me when, when I grew up. And he uh, would advise people in, in, the, in the community to be respectful to their parents. One time he was walking you know, in the street or the road and he saw two men walking together and one was a little older than the other one seemed older, uh, but the younger person didn't seem to give, you know, that, that status of respect to the elder. So he stopped them and he said, what's the relation between you and this other man? So the young man said, he's, he's my father. And he said, uh, show him more respect. Don't walk in front of him. Don't call him by his first name. And, you know, always uh, be good to him and, and advise him to, to look up to his father and, and, and so forth. So he was known to be a very... Um, a uh, passionate person about relationships with the parents. And then uh, when he passed away on his deathbed, he started to weep. So people asked him, why are you crying, uh, Abu Huraira? He said, I'm not crying because of my attachment to this world, but um, it's, a, it's a long journey that's about to start and uh, the accountability is, is about to start and I don't know which route I'm, I'm going to take. And this is a man, remember, who was extremely humble he devoted um, most of his life to learning Islam. When he uh, embraced Islam in his tribe, if you remember, he didn't go to Medina immediately because he had a mission. He wanted to give da'wah to his people for six years. He stayed there or for a, a, a number of years. He went to Medina six years after the, the hijrah. So for a period of time, he was, he was giving da'wah to his people. And then when he went to Medina, he did not seek the provisions of this life and to start a business like most or other people did to sustain themselves, but rather he just accepted the bare minimum that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him so that he can devote his time for uh, learning about the deen. And then after the Prophet ﷺ passed away is when he got married and, you know, started uh, living uh, a more normal life to, to sustain himself. So this is a man that he wasn't sure which, which direction he's, he's going too, and the Khalifa was visiting him as he was on his deathbed, and uh, he uh, he uh, asked, make dua, uh, oh Allah, I want to see you, so also I, I pray and ask that you want to see me, and shortly thereafter, the uh, Abu Huraira passed away before 
the Khalifa left his uh, his home. So with that, inshallah, concludes the story of Abu Huraira. What I'm going to ask for is uh, one person, inshallah, from the group to volunteer to summarize his life in uh, a small, you know, series of um, of slides, inshallah. So who would like to do that? So over the last four, today's the fourth time we talk or fourth session to discuss his life. Who can put, summarize this for us in, uh, in four slides, inshallah? Any volunteers? <laughs> 